less complicated than the land descriptions that have been coming out. Yes, Rob. <laughs> um, yes, there's some wonderful new uh, land descriptions from Landcare Research, um, which, you know, things like Rickerton soil, and, and some farmers are saying, well, never heard of that one before. I wonder what one that one's replacing. And we're thinking, well, maybe it should be Fendalton because it could make our farms more valuable. Well, that's a thought. Absolutely. But why would you want to change the names of soil types? No idea. No idea. But it's, it's uh, created a lot of confusion. It's been a uh, PR disaster in terms of the people who need to know their so soils and understand them, the, the, the poor values, the, the um, all sorts of values that, that soils have, hence giving them a name and a type. Um, are completely lost amongst a lot of the people who either own them or, or need to use that information. And, and indeed, in the North Island, there's, there's um, South Island names like Ashburton for, for soils in the North Island, and they used to be known as something else. And it's really thrown the industry into confusion. And, and I'm afraid Landcare Research, and I think the government put some funding in behind that, have stopped short of, of doing a PR exercise to the people that count. I believe it is on some website, but farmers like to remain farming, not spend all their time in front of a screen like some other people are paid to do. Real estate agents will be a bit confused as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, how do you how do you attain a or put a value around something that you knew as, um, you know, Paparoa or, or Templeton's or something like that? They they spoke volumes just in mentioning their names because everybody knew that what type of soil it was bit of variation underneath them in terms of whether it's clay or whether it's stony or, or sandy but that's about it you could buy a farm on a, on a soil map 